I'm not taking somebody who's got five thousand dollars of income and putting them in into almost half. Five thousand twenty-five equals five thousand. So yes, we're using the full five thousand for this scenario. So let's. Wait a minute. How the hell else are you going to pay your bills? this a lot obviously haters usually in the mortgage world i totally get it i understand you feel like we're taking uh food off of your family's table um but the truth is what it is and the facts are what they are so i've got one video i wanted to go over and share with you guys and kind of break it down i haven't watched it in its entirety uh, yet i've kind of watched snippets of it um but i wanted to watch it and just kind of pause and kind of give you my, my real life uh, and real time feedback on this. And I don't know who this individual is, probably a nice guy. I can already tell that it's a mortgage person because the channel is Mortgage IQ. So no different than us. Look, you, know, you go to replace your mortgage. What are we trying to expose the issues with mortgages? And what are we doing? And from a marketing perspective, is convince you that home equity lines of credit is the way to go. Now, a little bit different here, we don't make money on you actually getting a home equity line of credit, where this person does make money on you getting a mortgage. We make money on consulting you and showing you where a home equity line of credit makes more sense than a mortgage, whether it's in first lien position or second lien position. But I wanted to go through this a uh, little bit by little bit and just kind of show the math of things because you may be somebody on the outside looking in and like, you know, I'm, I'm looking into this, but then I've got this mortgage expert over here telling me that this is a terrible idea. So maybe I'm not gonna do it now. You gotta be careful where you're getting your information from. At the end of the day, do the math yourself. It is not hard math. We're talking third grade math here. So do the math yourself and just think through these things logically and you can come to your own conclusion. You don't need myself or even this person to tell you that getting a death pledge mortgage makes more sense over getting something that could liberate you in a home equity line of credit. So again, at the end of the day, the American dream is to own a home. It's not to transfer, transfer uh, a landlord from a private landlord to a bank landlord, because that's really what a mortgage is. And then technically even a home equity line of credit, you're still paying interest to a third party, albeit more efficiently and paying it faster, paying it all faster, but you're still paying interest to a third party. And we get into that uh, of how to replace that interest with something that is your own bank where you do get the interest. But I don't want to digress. I just want to talk about this video. It's only eight and a half minutes long. So let's go through it and see what he has to say. Five to seven years. Have you been seeing ads just like that? I've seen a bunch of videos and ads and claiming you can use this trick to pay off your home in five to seven years using the HELOC method. And I see, it seems like these start to come around when the market starts to turn a little bit. So I thought it might be a good idea to dive in and take a look. All right, first off, you see these things when the market uh, turns a little bit. We've been around for 10 years. I learned this in 2009 practice it myself uh, and in 2012 was able to pay off my home and then in 2014 is when i was like okay i'm done with the mortgage industry i'm tired of living a lie and being a fake and a fraud when this is what i personally do i'm going to turn this into a consulting business and expose the secret that even the experts don't want what you're talking about now outside of this video we have some other videos too where we prank called some mortgage lenders now, those mortgage lenders, the name of the company is completely bleeped out. The name of the loan officer is completely bleeped out. So we have several of those that we're posting. And I think you will be pretty surprised at what the result was of those calls. One of them, you're not gonna be surprised, but two other ones, you're gonna be very surprised. And by and large, what you'll find is they get it. And this is what they will do with their personal finances, but they're not yet quite telling you what to do, uh, to do this with your personal finances because they don't make money on it. Can't fault them for that. And see if this actually works. And some of these videos have millions of views. In fact, one that I was looking at Thank had you. six and a half million views. So people are definitely right. interested in it. Mm -hmm. So hey guys, I'm Christian. I've been in the mortgage industry since 2001 and I've worked pretty much every position, including being an owner. And in this video, we're gonna dive deep into this. Okay, so the assumption was right. He's in the mortgage business, which we kind of knew. The channel was Mortgage IQ. So yes, he's in the mortgage business. He's obviously going to be a bit biased uh, going into this, but that's okay. 
Uh, I'm sure he's a nice guy. He seems like a nice guy. I don't know him personally. So I'm gonna go as easy as I can. See if it actually works or not. If you know someone considering one of these options, please make sure to share this video with them so they can decide for themselves if this actually works or not. So a home equity line of credit is very similar to a credit card, but instead of getting a card, you actually get checks. So you have a limit and you can write checks up to that limit. And then at the end of the month, the statement comes and you have to pay at least in the interest, but you can pay more if you'd like. Mm. Okay. Some of it is true and some of it's not true. So <laughs> with these home equity lines of credit, you not only get checks associated with the home equity line of credit, you get a credit card associated with the home equity line of credit. You can get online bill pay associated with the home equity line of credit and some properly structured, you don't even have to make the minimum payments on if you're struggling. Obviously, it's something that if you're not struggling, don't take advantage of it that way because it will take advantage of you. But in times that you are struggling, the home equity line of credit can actually be a buffer for you where you don't even have to make a payment to it. If you've got availability on your line, the bank will make the payment on your behalf. So here's how they say that it works. So you take and you get a home equity line of credit for the full amount of the mortgage. And then what you do is you take your full paycheck and you deposit. All right, stop you there. <coughs> yes, the holy grails to get a home equity line of credit in first lien position on a promo rate, especially right now with rates rising. If you don't get a promo rate, you could be six, seven, eight, nine percent on a home equity line of credit but banks have flooded the market with promo rates. And so we have an entire team that is researching banks and credit unions that have six, 12, 18, 24 month, even there was a five year promo rate that is really low, even lower than what the mortgage rates were last year. So it doesn't have to be in first lien position. We are obviously huge advocates of first lien position because of the lack of risk to the bank. And when you reduce the risk to the bank, you reduce the risk to yourself. But there's also other strategies, which is utilizing a home equity line of credit in second lien position. So if you have somebody that is really high debt ratio, I wanna say high debt ratio, a threshold, right? You can't be too high, you won't qualify for a mortgage or a HELOC. But if you have a, a significantly higher debt ratio than some others, it would not make sense for you to let go of that low fixed rate mortgage. And in fact, it would be easier to qualify for a home equity line of credit for a smaller amount over here and then use a chunking strategy to pay down the mortgage until you've come to a threshold where you've got really good debt to income ratios. Then you can convert the whole thing to a first lien position home equity line of credit. I don't expect him to understand home equity lines of credit like I do. This is what I specialize in. He specializes in mortgages. So there are gonna be some things that he just doesn't know what he doesn't know. Into the home equity line of credit. So you kind of use the home equity line of credit like it's your bank account, right? So you deposit your check into there and you pay your bills out of that account instead. And that pays it off in the five to seven years. And then they say that with... It's an average of five to seven years. So again, I don't expect him to have the disclaimers that we do because it's not his business but the average is five to seven years. We've had some clients that are much faster than that, 10 months, one year, two years. We have some clients that are nine, 10, 11 years, which is still better than a 30 year mortgage. Even if it was the same time frame, we like the liquidity. We like having access to our equity 24 seven should we need it, as opposed to not having access to it when we need it. So again, he's saying five to seven years. That's actually not what we disclose. We disclose an average of five to seven years. Other bills that you have, you pay those with a credit card. When you put a charge on a credit card, typically don't pay interest for the first 30 days. Now, this is true. So you don't pay interest for the first 30 days. And then once the credit card bill comes, you pay the full balance out of the home equity line. Of <coughs> I don't know how long 0% lines of credit or credit cards have been around, but um, a long time, you know, I'm 44 years old. I can't, I can't think of a time that there weren't 0% credit cards. So it, it, what he's saying is true. If you have a rate on your credit card, yeah, you should pay it off every 30 days. But if you have 0%, it doesn't necessarily make mathematical sense to pay it off every 30 days. You, you can actually float that for a longer period of time. And the longer you float it, the faster you actually speed up the process. You put your paycheck into the home equity line of credit that satisfies the mortgage and then you pay the credit card payment out of the home equity line of credit once the bill comes and you pay that in full. And the idea being that the interest on a home equity line of credit is based on the average daily balance. And so when you open up that line of credit and you deposit your paycheck in there right away, 
it lowers that average daily balance. And so we're paying interest on a lower amount. And they claim that it works even if the interest rate is higher on the line of credit than your fixed mortgage. So let's take a look at it. The average rate on a home equity line of credit right now, and this is according to bank rate, is 7.3%. So I looked up a couple of averages. I figured it would be best to just use that so we can see for the average person, does this work? Now, all right. So again, he's using a really high number, which is 7.3% from uh, bank rate, which is a third party company that banks may participate in. So when you go to bank rate, you will only see a handful of banks that are actually advertising on bank rate to generate leads for their home equity lines of credit. So that would be an average of those handful of banks that are advertising on bank rate. However, again, we have an entire department that scours the market calling banks and credit unions <coughs> one by one, asking them what their terms and conditions are. And because interest rates have skyrocketed, lots of banks are offering promo rates. 1.99 for 12 months, 2.99 for 12 months, etc. right? The reason why banks are doing that is twofold. One, they still need business coming in the door. So they've got these teaser rates to get you coming in and saying, hey, that sounds like a really good rate. I'll take that for 12 months. Uh, so they need new originations coming in. But number two is, let's say somebody got a home equity line of credit a couple of years ago at 3%, and now rates have gone up, tripled. Now your minimum payment on your home equity line of credit has tripled. But if you have not been executing on our cash flow strategy, utilizing the HELOC, then you've been making minimum payments. Well, you are now, in the bank's eyes, potential for default. And banks don't wanna be in real estate, they wanna be in lending. So they don't want any paper, because this, a HELOC is a bank-owned asset, sits on their balance sheet, they don't want any defaults. So they're doing it to protect themselves, but they're also doing it to stimulate originations. So number one, he's already utilizing a high rate. That's fine, let's just see what else he's got to say. I'm sure he's gonna say that a mortgage rate is much lower, which they are, I'll give him that, but I promise you he's gonna utilize that too. Average rate on a mortgage, now this is based on Freddie, or Freddie Mac's survey, is 6.33%. So that's what we're going to use on comparing the fixed. Now, the median home price in the U.S. is 454900 And that's according to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Okay, so let's say you buy a home at 454900 and you put 20% down. That makes your loan amount 363920 now, if we have an interest rate at 6.33% on that 30 year, like we talked about, that makes your principal and interest payment 2259. Now with taxes and insurance, we'll use about 2,500 for the total payment. So when your mortgage statement comes in the mail, you start with a balance of 363,920, and then you have interest of 1920, that's based again on that 6.33% interest rate. You have your payment of- All right, just wanna make sure you heard what he said. <laughs> in the first month, over 80% of your payment is going to interest and the rest is going to principal. So it was like a $2,200 payment, 1,920 of it is going to interest first because a mortgage is front loaded with interest. 2,500 of which about 240 goes to taxes and insurance. That makes our balance after the first payment, 363,880. <coughs> now keep in mind 340 of that is going to principal, right? And so that actually pays off the loan in 30 years. It's a 30 year fixed. It pays off the loan over the course of 30 years. Now let's look. True words have never been spoken. It will take 30 years to pay that off. The HELOC method. The HELOC method claims if we take our whole paycheck and we deposit it into a line of credit, right? So we open up a line of credit for the same dollar amount. That's the 363,920. So we open up a home equity line of credit for that amount. We take our paycheck and we deposit it in there. Now the median household income for the US is $70,784 per year, right? So that equates to a take home pay of about 5,000. We're gonna use 5,000 just to make math a little bit easy. No, he's so not. So keep in mind, we have the $2,500 for our mortgage payment, right? So that's the principal interest tax and insurance. No, don't do that to yourself. And let's just say for figuring this, 2,500 is what it costs for us to eat and pay other bills, right? So $2,500 total, so 25 and 25 equals 5,000. So yes, we're yeah. using the full 5,000 for this scenario. So let's... Wait a minute, wait a minute. This dude's telling people who make $5,000 a month, take home pay, 
<laughs> to go get a 400 and what was it? 400 and some odd thousand dollar purchase price. And they've got 20% to put down. First, where the hell did they come up with the 20% to put down if they're only making $5,000 take home? So they've got $2,500 in their mortgage payment. They've got $2,500 left over for gas, utilities, bills, etc. I'm assuming, obviously, they have no car loans, no other credit card debt, no other consumer debt whatsoever. Right, right off the bat, if I'm a loan officer and I still want to sell financial crack to middle America, I'm not taking somebody who's got $5,000 of income and putting them into almost a half a million dollar home. They barely qualify or they don't qualify. Keep in mind, uh, Fannie and Freddie require a front end debt ratio of 33% debt ratio. So you're really, there is no margin for error here if they qualify. I personally, as a loan officer, would say, all right, this is above your budget. You really need to look at a lower priced home. And we also got to get somebody to clean up what I just spit on the wall. Yeah, Remind me, I'll do it myself. So you go ahead and you open your line of credit for that amount after you put the 20% down, right? You, you move that full loan balance from a 30 year fixed over to a line of credit. That means your balance starts at 363,920. You deposit your full $5,000 take home pay. That takes the balance to 358,920. And then of course you pay all of your other bills on the credit card, which defers that interest for the first 30 days, right? There's no interest on the credit card for the first 30 days. And then you get your home equity line of credit statement after the first month. So let's look at this. <coughs> for the first month, the interest on the home equity line of credit, keep in mind the balance is 5,000 lower because we're trying to take advantage of the lower average daily balance, right? But with that interest rate, the interest on there is $2,183. And then keep in mind, we've got to pay the $2,500 credit card out of the HELOC, okay? And then of course we have our taxes and insurance, which is about 240, right? So we've got to pay that as well. That makes our new balance 363,843. Did you notice that? All right, so I got to hand it to him. He's not stupid. He purposely is using a lower rate mortgage, a higher rate home equity line of credit, and reduced income, right? So when I say reduced income, you got 5,000 of take home pay. <clears throat> not only would I not encourage this person to get a mortgage for that amount, this person would not be encouraged to get a home equity line of credit. There's only three things that we talk about ad nauseum when getting a home equity line of credit. And number one is cash flow positivity. Do you have more money coming in than you spend, right? So if this person were to come to us and say, hey, I've got 5,000 coming in, I wanna purchase a almost half a million dollar property and I'm spending what comes in. What's our answer? You got to go back to basics. You either need to make more money or you've got to spend less money. We've got to work on your budget for the next six months and figure out a side hustle or something to get that margin bigger because we don't want you to become a client. We're not going to set you up for failure, whether it's a HELOC or a mortgage. Balance is actually higher than the 30 year fixed. So uh -oh. if this rate of 7.33 were a fixed rate and you did it as a home equity line of credit, but it was a fixed rate, it would actually take 46 and a half years to pay this off rather than the 30. But wait, that's not five to seven years either, is it? It's much longer. Even though we're paying the interest based on a lower balance, um, $5,000 lower in this case, because that interest rate is higher, it's still gonna cost more in interest. Now, here's another way that sometimes... So, I haven't coined this phrase, but I love this phrase. Our strategy is like yoga pants. Everybody can wear them, but not everybody should. And he's using a perfect example of who we would not allow to become a client and using that math to dispel the strategy. And that's not what it is. I mean, now let's rerun the numbers. If somebody had 10 grand in monthly income, but instead of $5,000 of expenses, let's say six or $7,000 of expenses, and now let's run the numbers and see what it looks like. It's a much different picture. So again, you have to be the right fit for this, but I'll go back to, this isn't even a right fit for a mortgage. This dude shouldn't be selling people mortgages that have this high of a debt ratio because if they ever needed to get a car or borrow for a car or have an emergency, 
I don't even know where the hell they came up with the 20% unless they got it gifted to them from their parents or whatever. But if you 20% on a half a million dollars is a hundred grand and you, you're living paycheck to paycheck, where does that hundred grand come from? Was that additional debt that you borrowed from somebody else in order to come up with a down payment? I mean, these are just, it's all the numbers in favor of the mortgage and all the numbers that are not in favor of a home equity line of credit that we wouldn't even use anyways. I've seen it presented and I had someone actually present it to me this way, but let me know in the comments below. I like his smile though. A little snarky. I mean, this dude could probably have a beer, um, but yeah, a little snarky. Yeah, look, I am too. I totally get it. But th this is, uh, this is entertainment. I like this. We got to do this more of this. Catch the strategy here. You open your HELOC, of course, the balance 363, 920, right? You pay the full $5,000 take home pay into that HELOC, and that takes the balance to 358, 920. And then you pay your 240 for taxes and insurance, and this pays it off in 8.3 years. That math checks out. So it works, right? But wait a minute, did you catch it? That's assuming a person has zero as far as other bills go. No utilities, no food, no fun, nothing, right? That assumes that there is zero. And so if you had bought the average home and you put 20% down and you put it into a home equity line of credit and you have the <coughs> average take home pay of someone in the United States and you put all of that towards your mortgage, you would pay it off in 8.3 years. So, okay, let's. Okay. So how are you going to be liquid if you put all of your take home pay into your mortgage? How the hell else are you going to pay your bills? I mean, your savings obviously went towards the down payment. So how are you taking care of gas, groceries, utilities, et cetera? So he, he's advocating that let's take all of your take home pay and put it into the mortgage. And that's 100% of your income, right? Which you can do. You can put 100% of your income into the mortgage for the first month. But here's what will happen in the second month is you realize, holy crap, I've got to pay the gas bill. I've got to pay uh, the electric bill. I've got cell phone bills. I got all this other stuff that I got to pay for. And guess who's holding on to my funds? The mortgage lender. We're in the home equity line of credit. You can put it in there and take it out anytime you want 24-7. I'm not saying that the numbers work in his scenario because we wouldn't take these people on as a client, whether it's a mortgage or a HELOC, but you can't, you can't say that a person is going to and willing to, and they will have the discipline to put 100% of their income to the mortgage. That would be a train wreck. Play along, we'll play along with that for a moment. Let's say we take that 2,500 and apply it towards the fixed rate mortgage, which would be better. Well, it turns out that if we do that route instead, we would pay it off in 8.1 years. So it's still better off to do it that way and putting additional towards the mortgage as opposed to the home equity line of credit. And keep in mind, if you take out a home equity That's line of credit, possible. it's not fixed, it's adjustable. Ooh. And it's fully adjustable. Oh, oh, did you hear what he just said? He said that the HELOC is adjustable and it's fully adjustable. <clears throat> Not all HELOCs are adjustable. What he really means is variable. He's speaking in mortgage terms. He's been in the mortgage industry for 40, or I'm sorry, 23 years, 22 years. Uh, actually started when I started. Um, adjustable is a mortgage term, have an adjustable rate mortgage, an ARM. In the HELOC world, we call it variable. So there's three types of HELOCs. There's variable, which are by and large, the majority of HELOCs out there. <clears throat> there is fixed, which means it's fixed for a period of time, anywhere from six months to five years. We see that. And then there's hybrid, which means you can have a portion of your HELOC that is variable and you can have a portion of your HELOC that is fixed. And you pay a fee to the bank, 95 bucks, anytime you want to unlock a portion that is fixed or variable. Um, so again, I don't expect him to know what I know. He has been doing it as long as I have. Um, but that is not 100% true that all HELOCs are adjustable. So, but here's the thing, what prevents you, because HELOCs are not like mortgages. They don't have mortgage insurance. They don't have the closing costs that mortgages do. And there's nothing to prevent you to go from a 1.99 for 12 months, and then 11 months later, let's get another 1.99 for 11 months, because the only time that, uh, Promo rates on the in the banking industry, in the HELOC industry, that was a little scarce was during COVID when rates had plummeted to the federal funds rate to zero to 0.25%. And the reason why it was scarce is if a bank's got a 2.5 or 3% home equity line of credit rate at prime plus zero, 
is there a whole lot of incentive for them to offer a 1.99? No, there was still some, but it just wasn't very um, abundant as it is today. However, today, banks have flooded the market with these promo rates that are fixed, which means when I say fixed, it's fixed, let's use 1.99 for 12 months. It's 1.99 for 12 months. For, for 12 months, it doesn't matter what's going on in the market, your rate's not going to change. But there's nothing to prevent you that next year, either with that bank or a different bank, to jump to another 1.99 or even if it was 2.99. It's better than the 7.3 number that he's uh, using for the HELOC. In fact, every time the feds get together to raise rates, guess what happens to that? It goes up. So if they raise the rates a half point, it goes up half a point. So it's... Okay, guess what else also happens? What happened during COVID when the feds actually lowered rates? The HELOCs went down. So they only talk about, or at least he's only talking about in, in terms of a, a variable, he uses the term adjustable, their rate's only going up. See, you, you gotta be careful with, with individuals like this or information like this because when anyone talks about variable, you're, you're immediately going to the back of your mind is rates only going up, but it's a two way street. Rates can also come down. There will be a point in time where the Fed has to reduce interest rates to stimulate the economy. Guess what? If you have an interest rate on a HELOC on Prime or T-bill, it'll eventually lag a little bit. I like the six month T-bill over Prime and LIBOR, but what does your rate do? It actually goes down as well. So he's not telling both sides of the story here. He's only telling the worst sides of the home equity line of credit. Really risky to have all of that balance on a home equity line of credit, right? And at some point in the future, yes, the feds will probably lower the rates in order to help the economy, help stimulate the economy. But My man. Is, who knows, right? And if you're gonna have this mortgage for many years, it can be really risky to have it completely adjustable, right? So the real way to pay off a loan quicker and really the only way is to make payments to the principal only. Now there's a couple of different options for doing this. Bi-weekly is a really co a popular method. That okay. True, the only way to pay down principal is to pay down principal. <laughs> this is not a magical elixir, but there are more efficient ways to pay down principal. And he says that there's only one way. I have an issue with individuals to say, there's only one way and guess whose way it is? It's my way that actually gets me paid commissions one to 2% to do a mortgage for you, right? This is marketing no different than we do. So I'm not hating on this. I totally get it. I hope he gets originations and he makes good money off of this. But you know, for people that are watching this and also watching our stuff, I think it's important to understand the complete facts and truths of what you're hearing here. Uh, the other thing he hasn't talked about is the closing costs associated with either one. That's completely missing from his presentation. You know, <coughs> I just mentioned earlier that HELOCs by and large are absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything to open them up. Sometimes the appraisal fee is, is way for you. Uh, the bank will, will take that on the chin. However, on a mortgage side, you've got thousands of dollars of title insurance, escrows, um, underwriting fees, processing fees, origination fees. Where do you think this guy's commission comes from? It comes from you overspending. That's where profits come from. It comes from consumers overspending. So there's a reason why mortgages have commissions, big paychecks, and there's a reason why HELOCs don't. You know, I, most bankers get paid zero to do a home equity line of credit because there's no profits in it, right? So what do you want to consume? Something that has massive profits that pay out big commissions or something that has no profits that pay out no commissions? Two weeks, and so over the course of the year, you end up making 13 payments instead of 12, and that last payment, the full amount goes to principal. So it's a little more granular than that. So bi-weekly payment <coughs> is, let's say you got a $1,000 mortgage payment, you take 500 of it and you pay it every two weeks. So it's really what it is, is 26 half payments or 13 full payments. And on a 30 year term, you could reduce the 30 year term down to 24 to 25 years. What did he do? It's a way. Another is if you send additional payments in with your mortgage, right? So if you send an extra 100, 200 per month, that will go directly towards your mortgage. You gotta make sure you Okay, maybe I was going to interrupt him, but maybe he's going to say this. Specify that it go directly to principal, because if you don't, it will prepay a portion of the next payment, right? Mm -hmm. But if you... I want to make sure you understand that when you pay, again, 
There's a lot of aha gotcha moments in a mortgage that if you pay extra on it and you send in an extra payment, you need to specify that you want that to go to principal. If you don't, guess what they're gonna do? Prepay the interest. So in a mortgage, all you gotta do is look at the loan estimate, which is the last page. Um, it is tip, total interest percentage. That last page of the loan estimate is telling you, you're actually buying two homes. You're buying one for the bank or the lender, mortgage lender, and one is yours. Which one do you think you're paying off first? The banks or the lenders. You buy their home first, then you pay yours off next. If you do that, then those two ways will help you to pay it off quicker. But there aren't any magical ways. And if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And so- oh, I love it. He's using grandma's terms, grandfather's terms of, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Man, that really tugs on a lot of people's you know, heartstrings. Like, yeah, that's what my parents told me. That's what my grandparents told me. No, it's not always the case. Uh, it, it's something that you should, this is very easy math that you should look into yourself. But here's the other thing that he hasn't talked about. Let's, let's assume, because in his numbers, which we would not allow, uh, probably a lot of underwriters wouldn't even allow on a mortgage side either based on these debt ratios, because this is assuming this person has no other debt outside of their mortgage. If they did, they don't qualify for this scenario, nor would they be able to pay extra into it. Uh, I mean, technically they could, but they wouldn't after the first month because they realize no, I need to stay liquid and I've got to have some, some money over here to pay my other bills. So that example doesn't work. But one thing he hasn't touched on is, okay, it's pretty close in comparison if you use a home equity line of credit versus a mortgage. Let's say it's the same. No, actually, let's take it a step further. Let's say the mortgage was eight years and the HELOC was nine years. The mortgage, how much liquidity do you have? Zero, zero for emergencies or opportunities. Would it not be worth it to have an extra year to pay off on the home equity line of credit, but you are 100% liquid for both opportunities or emergencies? In his scenario, he actually said it was pretty close. I think it was off by a couple months, but again, he's using high interest rate HELOC, really low income. He's using lower rate on the mortgage and saying all of the income is gonna go into the mortgage which a person just would not do. If you have anything else like this you want me to check out, please make sure to drop it in the comments below and, and we can check it out for you. Also, if you wanna learn more about home equity lines of credit and how they work, go ahead and watch this video right here. It'll tell you all you need to know. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. All right, maybe a nice dude. I don't know who he is. Um, doesn't have a lot of subscribers. I wish him well in his mortgage journey, obviously. You know, he, he makes money <coughs> offering mortgages and mortgages have their place. And, you know, if mortgage lenders actually understood us as a business and what we do, we generate hundreds or thousands of leads per day and calls. And over 70% of those are not people we're willing to take on as a client. We only take on people that are a good fit mathematically for our strategy. And the rest, guess where we tell them to go? back to their mortgage lender. So people like this should actually collaborate with us because right now in this you know market where uh, rates have gone up, mortgage lenders are, it's a bloodbath out there. They're struggling. Some that used to be doing $10 million a month are now doing $5 million a month. Those that were doing $2 million a month are now doing you know, sub million dollar months. Their income has been drastically constricted and they're looking for ways for leads. We generate a lot of leads for you uh, because we're not taking on every client. We're only taking on the right ones. And I advocate that you should too. Don't do a mortgage for somebody just because they barely qualify. Actually have a fiduciary responsibility to help them and prevent them from foreclosure because in this scenario, that family and the strategy that he's talking about, they are one iota, one inch, one mistake, one debt away from potential foreclosure. So hope you like this video. Take care. God bless.